بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار إن شاء الله تبارك الله continuing the reading of the three fundamental principles with the explanation of Sheikh Saleh Al-Fawzan Hafizahullah we have reached <coughs> the point where as the Sheikh Rahimahullah meaning Al-Mu'allif he was discussing about وَبَعْدَ الْعَشَرَ and after the tenth meaning the tenth year before, meaning after the tenth year in the bi'atha, meaning when the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent, urija bihi ila sama, he was ascended to the heavens, wa furidat alayhi as-salawatu al-khams, and the five daily prayer was being made an obligation. وَصَلَّى فِي مَكَّةَ And he, the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, prayed in Mecca ثلاثة سنين I mean three years. He prayed in Mecca three years. And here, بإذن الله تبارك الله شيخ صالح الفوزان حفظه الله He is mentioning a very important point. That is in regard to the Al-Isra'u wal-Mi'raj Number one after the messenger Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He was Being Ascended by Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala And that assumption It is Both By way of As we will cover it It is When the when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the room of our mother Ummu, Ummu, Ummu Hani Ahsanta, in the room of our mother or in the house of our mother Ummu Hani, and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asleep. And this is during which Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam, he came and he took the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on that night journey meaning from Mecca to Bayt al-Maqdis and from Bayt al-Maqdis to the ascension uh, to the ascension meaning ascended him to that which is the seven above the seven heavens meaning to the seven heavens where he the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received the obligation of the five daily prayer. And he mentioned, uh, the Shaykh Hafizahullah, Shaykh Salah al Fawzad, he mentioned, he said that it is here, khams, it is five, khamsun, but it is fifty. He said, khams fil amal. it is five in regard to the actions, but wa khamsuna fil mizan. But it is 50 in regard to the scales, 5 in regard to the actions, and 50 when it comes to the scales, meaning in regard to the reward. He say, Khamsa salawat fil yawm wal layl. 5 salawat during the night and the day, meaning the, during the night time and the day time. To adilu khamsina salat fil mizan. And those five daily prayer, meaning during the night and during the day, it is the equivalent in regard to the reward of 50 salawat, 50 prayers. So in other words, you do one and you get ten. You do one and you be rewarded ten times. And this is from the mercy of Allah, our Creator, that we do less and we, re we are rewarded much. A person will do less, but he will be rewarded much. And there is a lot of, alhamdulillah, actions in the religion. 
that the person, alhamdulillah, might not even do but be rewarded. He might not even do the action but he's rewarded for that. For instance, aiding and facilitating <coughs> under the worship of the worshiper, then you will get the reward. Meaning that is from their reward and it is not taking away nothing from their reward themselves. Whatever the reward of the action, they will get it. And you, the one that facilitated, you will get the reward also. Right? It is just like, Barakallahu Fikum, if, alhamdulillah, a person, he, yani, uh, something that is, that could be very easy. I mean, you know, that maybe many people will not pay attention to. It could be just cleaning the bathroom. As simple as that. It could be just making sure that the, you know, the, 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 the wudu area is, is dry for the next person coming. Right? It's simple things, barakallahu feekum. So the individual, alhamdulillah, that is aiding and facilitating for the worship to be established, then he will be rewarded, walillah, alhamdulillah, min, in regard to what? In regard to the worship that the person, alhamdulillah, he has aided and facilitated to, yani, to establish. So here, it is a action of five, meaning it is five actions, but the reward is 50. For salah to wahid, so one salah, it is, barakallahu feekum, the equivalent of ashara salawat. It is the equivalent of ten, of ten salawat. So for every salah, it is the reward of ten. So five times ten it is equal to fifty. And alhamdulillah for al-Islam. So therefore in this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise in he mentioned وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ نَزْلَةَ الْأُخْرَى عِنْدَ سِدْرَةِ الْمُنْتَهَى عِنْدَهَا جَنَّةُ الْمَأْوَى إِذْ يَغْشَ السِّدْرَةَ مَا يَغْشَى مَا زَغَ الْبَصَرُ وَمَا تَغَى لَقَدْ رَآهُ مِنْ أَوْ لَقَدْ رَآ مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِ الْكُبْرَى Here in the Surah Al-Najm from verse number 13 to 18 <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned and here in this verse it is clarified about the act the fact that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has seen Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam in his angelical form he has seen Jibreel in his angelical form meaning in the essence of an angel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created him so and as we study this 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 ayah this verse with the hadith of mashruq when he went to the messenger when he went to aisha radiyallahu anha one of the wives of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one of the mothers of the believers and he asked her about this verse walaqad ra'ahu nazlat al-ukhra that he has indeed seen him for the second time so was this verse to mean that the Prophet Sallallahu has seen Allah for the second time? Or what was it saying in, re in reality? And her, our mother, she, our mother, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, she said that I was from the first one in this ummah, in this nation to ask about this verse. I was the first one to ask about this verse. And she mentioned radiallahu anha, that this was in regard to Jibreel being seen by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam returned from that night journey and from that ascension, Thumma innahu nazala min as samai ila bayt al maqdis So for the trip was the night journey from Mecca to Bayt al maqdis to Jerusalem. And this is one way a month. It will take the Arabs a month to travel from Mecca to Bayt al-Maqdis. And it will take another month to return back. So you will, if you look at it, the back, you know, the round trip, it will take two months. Right? Two months. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He, and we all know that the land and the earth, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the distance is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah jalla wa ala, he enabled his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. And this is also from the mu'jiza, from the miracles that Allah has given the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Which that he, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, he, what was being traveled during a period of one month, one way, he, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, took him one night. He took him one night, not even 24 hours. He took him one night. So that being the case, when he came back, are the mushrikeen of the Arabs, the disbelievers, and we know that in Mecca there was only two groups. You got the believers and the disbelievers. There was no one hiding their faith. <coughs> it was either the believers or the disbelievers. Either those who believe and they hold firm upon their belief. Or those who disbelieve and they were rebellious and they were bold about their disbelief. Right? They were bold about their disbelief. But subhanallah, if a person is upon the truth, right? And if those who are upon falsehood, they are brave about their falsehood, then how about the one that is upon the truth? If the one that is upon misguidance is 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 is, is turn about it then how about the one that is upon the truth then the one that is upon the truth barakallah fikum has all the rights to be firm upon what he believes because he can always justify what he believes in amma the disbelievers as Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan mentioned as he quoted Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned he said that the disbelievers, that they don't, they, there is no way possible they can justify their belief. There is no way they can justify their belief. And subhanAllah, this is something that we encounter every day. You know, Oranges that you want to just take and eat, Akhi. They set it right there by the Buddha. Put some cups of water. So we ask them, hey, who's going to eat this, this, these oranges? Is, is, it, is this guy going to eat it? Or who, who going to eat it? He said, no. Uh, we, before the food go bad, we're going to eat it. Now, did you buy your God that you worship him? Did you buy him? Did you put him in that cave? Did you? Oh, now the person is out of, out of line. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just following the region of my fathers. There is no hujjah that they can bring about. There is no argument that they can bring about their disbelief. Because it doesn't hold no water whatsoever. <coughs> so here, when the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, he came back to Mecca from Baytul Maqdis, from the heavens to Baytul Maqdis, from Beitul Maqdis to Barakallah Fikum.